babe, I need you to build me a coffee table. I am busy right now. Like I don't have time. This is my vision. Square, chunky, but it has an inset base. Can it be a Star Wars coffee table? It's not really my vision. I'm kind of wanting a square coffee table. This is not the coffee table you're looking for. This is not the coffee table I'm looking for. And with a Jedi mind trick, I convinced my wife to let me build a Star Wars coffee table. Now, I really want a finished piece that she's gonna like as well, so I'm gonna build a table with her desired shape and dimensions in mind, but also with some really cool Star Wars-inspired elements mixed in, as well as make a video with a healthy amount of Star Wars dad jokes sprinkled throughout. <laughs> like, what's Luke's favorite place to shop? The secondhand store. <laughs> okay, that's bad. All right, let's make the jump to light speed and get this thing going. Now, if this slab looks familiar, it's because it's a cottonwood slab from that same tree I built my Glass River dining table from last year. And it's got that same lightsaber or chainsaw defect that those slabs had. Now, I've got a Rebel Alliance going with my friends over at Vintage Reclaim Lumber in Oklahoma City where I picked up this slab. And if you ever happen to find your way there, tell them that you heard it on Johnny Builds and they'll hook you up with 10% off. Cottonwood might be my favorite species of wood to work with. And while it doesn't really look like much on the outside, that wood grain and the figuring are absolutely beautiful and they're really unique as you'll see as I get the slab cut and cleaned up. Now, I'm cutting it in half so I can flip these two slabs around and create a live edge river shape just like Beggar's Canyon back home. And I made a template out of some plywood scrap that I got out of the trash compactor. I got a bad feeling about this. So I can get an idea of what I'm working with and a layout that I'm happy with. Now, there isn't much I can do about that chainsaw defect. So just like I did with the glass river table, I'm gonna celebrate it by adding a really cool bow tie inlay, which in this case, obviously is gonna be Star Wars theme, but more on that later. I'm gonna flatten the slabs on my CNC Jabba the Cut, which I do by shimming the slabs to even out the high points and then manually jogging the machine over the slabs until I get those high points knocked down enough that I can run a full flattening profile and then let the machine do the rest of that work. Between the slabs, I have this idea to make a really cool galaxy epoxy pour panel with some fiber optic LEDs poking through so it looks like stars in the galaxy. But first I brushed on some India ink to color that panel black. I added some side panels that are covered in that red stucco tape and this creates a form around the panels. And then I laid out the two slabs on top so I could know exactly where I needed to drill the holes for the fiber optic strands. Now I had 200 tiny holes to drill and then 200 tiny little fiber optic strands to poke through the panel one by one. And as I was drilling to keep track, I would do 10 holes at a time and then make a little tick mark so I could quickly see how many holes I had drilled up to that point. Okay, with all the holes drilled, I cleaned up any tear out on the underside of the panel and began that tedious process of poking those 200 individual strands of fiber optic cable through the holes that I just drilled. And I'll make sure to link this fiber optic LED system that I got on Amazon down below. At first, I was using hot glue to secure these, but as you see, this was melting those strands that are made from plastic, which clearly aren't as strong as carbonite. So I switched over to CA glue and hit it with some activator that quickly sets the CA glue, and this worked out way better. Before I do the epoxy pour, I've got to seal all those holes, which I did with a bit of silicone caulk. It is time to pour some epoxy. I'm gonna try something I've never tried before, and that's to pour epoxy and make it look like a galaxy. I'm going with my old standby Total Boat two to one high performance epoxy. It works, I know exactly what I can expect from it. I'm gonna try to get about an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch of a pour. I know there's a lot of this area that isn't going to be uh, seen because the slabs are gonna cover it up, but I need everything to be nice and even when I attach this to the bottom of the slabs. So I'm gonna pour it all, but I'm only focused on how this area looks where I put all the fiber optics in. Part A first. 
part B second. I'm gonna add some of this uh, Total Boat pigment dispersion in black. You know, we got the dark side. We gotta balance it out with a little light side. Little um, white pearl. I'm gonna start in the core systems and work my way out to the outer rim here. To get something that resembles a bunch of stars in a galaxy far, far away, I'm gonna mist in some white paint, which I'm gonna do by spraying into a cup. And then I just sort of like flicked it onto the epoxy canvas. And I didn't even know if this would work out, but that finished result was exactly what I was hoping for. While the epoxy cures, I'm switching gears to the steel surround of the coffee table that has that Empire Death Star pill light pattern carved into it. Evacuate in our moment of triumph. I think you overestimate their chances. My buddy Richard over at 42 Fab has a plasma CNC table, which might be the closest thing to having an actual lightsaber. Seriously, I need to hit up the Jawas and see if I can get a machine like this, but it's nice to know that I've got a friend in town who can cut these out for me, and it's really not as expensive as you might think. I paid 90 bucks for all of these cuts and the material, which was four of these 12 inch by 40 inch long panels of 10 gauge steel. He also threw in this welded steel rose to give to my wife. And Richard actually has a whole lineup of weld it yourself kits, which are really cool. He threw in this uh, sticker that's got his website on there. It's not a sponsor thing or anything like that, but if you're into that, make sure you go check that out. Now, my plan is to weld these panels up into what essentially is a steel box that all the guts of this coffee table will live down inside. Sort of like Luke in that Tauntaun. I'm using my Forney 210 multi-process welder running gas shielded MIG wire. And while I'm not a great welder myself, this machine is extremely easy to use. And it's got those digital displays and adjustment knobs that allow you to dial in precise voltage and wire speed. Now you can run this machine off of 220 or 110. I've got it running off of 220, so I'm running at full power. And this means I'm getting good penetrating welds that make even an amateur welder like myself capable of confidently putting a piece like this together. Forney's a sponsor of this channel and I'll make sure I'll have links for all this Forney welding equipment and their abrasives down below in the video description. Oh and real quick, what happens when there's a roadblock in space? You have to take an R2 detour. <laughs> They're not getting any better folks, just bear with me here. Okay, the welding and the grinding is all done and I'm using some Bondo to fill in the gap from the rounded edge of the angle iron where it mates up to the side panels so it all looks like one solid piece. If you've never worked with Bondo before, it's really easy to use. The stuff cures in like 20 minutes and then you can come back and sand it right away. I'm gonna paint the whole steel shell of this table with Rust-Oleum enamel paint and black satin. Okay, back to the Galaxy epoxy pour, and the background layer has had about 24 parsecs to cure, and I can cut back all the fiber optic strands and prepare for the next pours. I'm using more of that Total Boat 2 to 1 high performance epoxy, but this time I'm gonna pour on a clear layer, and then I mixed up these colors that I'm gonna swirl in to create something that resembles a galaxy nebula. Now I'm going for sort of a dark side versus light side theme, so it's gonna have red swirled in on one side and blue swirled in on the other, and then it's gonna kind of all meet in the middle. I don't know, it's gonna be cool.
Setting that epoxy panel aside to cure, I jumped back to working on the slabs and cleaning up a few of those bark inclusions and knot holes so I can fill these with epoxy. I also cleaned the live edge, which was already missing the bark, but still had a little bit of bark residue that I just sanded clean. Now, I just built this handy little workbench and did a whole video on it, so make sure you check that out if you haven't, but it's got a UHMW polyethylene top, which means I can pour epoxy directly on it and it's not gonna stick. It's especially important with wood as light as cottonwood to seal the surface to prevent epoxy from staining the wood. And to do this, I like to use Total Boat Gleam Varnish. For these pours, I'm gonna use Total Boat Thick Set Epoxy so I can pour it up to two inches thick. And then I'm gonna tint it a smoky black color. Now, Total Boat has been a long time sponsor of this channel. I've got links down below for all of these products as well as a coupon code that's gonna get you 10% off at totalboat.com. You know, I've been watching so much Star Wars content on Disney Plus that I completely forgot that I still have a Hulu subscription. Well, thankfully, Truebill, the sponsor of today's video, helps remind me and cancel those unwanted subscriptions. And to try Truebill out for free, head to truebill.com slash johnnybills or click the link down in the video description. So Truebill is an all-in-one finance platform that helps you spend less and save more. And with Truebill, you can find and cancel unwanted subscriptions, lower bills, monitor your credit score, and build your savings all in one place. So I've been using Truebill myself for months now and one of the most useful things that I find is how it helps me set up and maintain my budget. Truebill gives me weekly reminders of what bills are due and when. And Truebill can help you lower those bills simply by taking a photo and tapping a button. And like I mentioned, Truebill safely and securely identifies reoccurring charges and cancels unwanted subscriptions for you with just a tap. So bye-bye streaming service that I haven't watched for the last six months and completely forgot about. Again, to try Truebill for free, just go to truebill.com slash johnnybuilds or click the link down in the video description. Thanks to Truebill for sponsoring this video. The thick set epoxy took a full two days to cure before I could pull off the tape and then throw these back on the CNC to reflatten and clean up the excess epoxy. Now I can lay out the slabs in their final position, which I'm gonna lock into place with some of these temporary boards. Now this is really important so I can get the correct final dimensions to fit inside that steel surround. I'm having Jabba carve in a recess that allows the slabs to slot into the angle iron at the top and then cutting the slabs to a final dimension to fit inside the steel surround that has a half inch of clearance that allows for seasonal wood movement. This is a river table style coffee table, which means I must also carve in a recess for the glass, or actually acrylic in this case, to sit down flush with the top of the slabs. Now, in order to 3D model that shape of the live edges, I have to measure out a grid of lines on top of the slabs, and then come back and measure every one of those lines to get the distance from the outside of the slab to the inside of that live edge. I did this along every inch, and once I've got all those numbers recorded, I can jump into SketchUp and and then transfer all this information into a model. Once I've got all that, I can connect all of those endpoints and I end up with a very close representation of what the shape and dimension of that live edge is. Now, before I actually carved it, I pulled it into Vetric Aspire to clean up all of those line segments and create more of an organic curving shape. Last, while I still had the slabs perfectly positioned and still have my work zero, I'm gonna carve in those three bow tie inlays, which are all different Star Wars ships. So starting with an X-Wing, I pulled an online image of an X-Wing into SketchUp and just drew some simple vectors around it to create like an outer shape of an X-Wing. I did the same thing with a TIE Fighter and I think I'm gonna have to call this a bow tie fighter. <laughs> what do you think? Last, to create something that sort of resembles a more traditional looking bow tie, I drew vectors for a Millennium Falcon. And then I copied that, rotated and mirrored it, and then connected it, and then sent all of these files over to Java the Cut to carve them into the slabs.
Okay, that's all the carving that I need to do to the top of these slabs. So now I can take them off the CNC. I don't have to worry about maintaining my work zero. And next I can carve that acrylic panel. And Chloe and Katie dropped by the shop just in time to have the super satisfying job of peeling the plastic off of that acrylic panel. All right, back to that Galaxy epoxy pour panel. And I decided I didn't like that super shiny look. So I'm sanding it down to 80 grit and then working my way all the way back up to 600 grit to give the whole thing a more matte finish. Oh, by the way, this is Jeff. He's my new Padawan, or maybe he's my Sith apprentice. Always do. Anyways, I needed an extra hand here around the shop and he's gonna be helping me out behind the camera and you'll see him pop up in the videos from time to time. So make sure you guys give Jeff a welcome down in the comments and he's actually on Instagram. He's a really talented maker and you can find him at Maker's Way. We laid the slabs into the steel surround while it was upside down and then cut the epoxy panel to size before placing that on top of the slabs. Now, there's gonna be an internal structural box that serves a couple purposes. First, the LEDs that light up the white acrylic panels that are gonna go behind that Empire Pill light cutout are gonna get attached to this box. It's also what will wedge in the slabs and hold them all in place and kind of create the internal structure for the whole piece. Now, I didn't have enough cottonwood left over to build the entire base and then carve the bow tie inlays. So I'm resawing this cottonwood slab offcut, and essentially I'm gonna be using this as a thick veneer over some of these plywood strips. The design calls for an inset base like my wife asked for, but I also wanted to add in some Star Wars details by carving in a couple of Star Wars motifs on the base. And next up, I carved those bow tie inlays into more of that cottonwood that I milled up. The carved bases and the Millennium Falcon bow ties all get epoxy inlays poured next. So the following day, this had cured and was ready to sand. And real quick, I've got another one for you. Bear with me. What did Luke do at the sushi restaurant when he was having trouble using chopsticks? Use the forks, Luke. <laughs> so bad. Moving on. This next bit was my favorite part of this whole build. Again, these bow ties aren't structurally necessary, but they look really cool. Now there were some small gaps, so I just filled these in with some wood glue and sanded the inlays down, which allowed that sawdust to mix in. And with the glue, this filled any gaps that I had. After popping the grain with water, I sanded the slabs back to 220 grit and then added some threaded inserts to the underside. You guys know that I'm a big fan of Odie's oil, especially on cottonwood, so that's what I'm gonna be using here. Um, real quick, I wanted to clean up these base pieces that I haven't yet assembled. There was some epoxy staining that I wasn't able to sand through. So I'm like, I'll just run it through the planer real quick off camera. I ran it through once, it didn't uh, take off enough. I ran it through a second time and forgot how shallow I carved this. And as it came out the other side, I was like, <laughs>
it completely ruined this piece. So now I've got to clean these up, carve them again on the CNC, pour epoxy, wait a day for that to cure, and then tomorrow I can assemble this base and get this project done. So one stupid little boneheaded move and it adds a whole extra day to this project. But that's kind of how it always goes. <laughs> Okay, we're getting so close to the finish line on this piece. And real quick, I wanna say thanks for watching this video. I hope you take the time to drop a like and to get subscribed as that's the best way you can support what I do. And I'm so grateful for that. I love that I get to make silly projects like the Star Wars coffee table. And there's no way I could do this without the support of my viewers. So thank you to all of you. Oh, boy, boy, I love you. Now I can put the whole table together and I should note this epoxy panel gets attached to the back of the slabs with those threaded inserts I installed earlier. And then I had to make these elongated holes. Now these don't have to be pretty. They only have to be functional, which they definitely were not pretty. Panel gets attached through these elongated holes, which then allows the slabs room to move with that seasonal wood movement. We got the slabs locked down in place with these temporary boards and flipped the whole coffee table over, which is getting much more heavy at this point. And you may notice here that the acrylic panel that I've got still has the plastic on it. This is because I got a little off on my math and I had to carve another acrylic panel that was a quarter inch more narrow than that original one. Okay, on to the white acrylic light panels that go behind the pill-shaped cutouts and allow the LEDs to shine through. Now, I really didn't know exactly how this was all gonna go together, so I really am just kind of making this all up as I go along. It's difficult to attach acrylic to steel since adhesives don't like to stick to it, so I'm just gonna wedge these panels in place with blocks of plywood. Then I made these kind of corner braces or little L brackets, which are gonna serve to clamp in the acrylic on the ends, but this also serves to brace the slabs and the whole internal structure. Now on these L brackets, I did add some construction adhesive that helps lock them in place. And I should get some pretty good adhesion between the plywood and the raw steel on the inside. Next, that center box with the LEDs goes in. And again, I'm totally making up how this all goes together as I go. I used more construction adhesive and just sort of toe screwed the box to that epoxy panel below it. I've got two plugs inside that I need to get power to. So I found this two plug power strip and then carved a plywood piece that fits around it so I can attach it to the wall of that internal box. I did the same thing for the LED driver and then finished out the remainder of the internal guts of this coffee table by using some shims to wedge the whole structure through those lower angle iron brackets. I covered all of that up with some half inch plywood and left some room for the plug to come through and then access to the center if I ever need it later on. All right, back to the base, the epoxy is cured and I can sand those down. And I'm definitely not gonna be running this through the planer again. I'm just gonna glue and clamp these miter corners together. And then once that was dry, I reinforced it with some corner brackets. I also had to cut away a spot in the base that allows the power cord to pass through. And last, the base gets attached to the coffee table with some figure eight fasteners. And Jeff helped me flip the whole thing over for the very first time. And man, this thing is really heavy and solid. I am so happy with how this piece came out. I've been a Star Wars fan my whole life. I watched all the movies, I grew up on it. And to have a piece like this in my home is just really satisfying, really fun. I think those bow tie inlays look so good. And I'm really glad I honed down that epoxy panel so it wasn't super shiny. All right, let's cut off the lights and see how this thing really looks. We brought the coffee table back to the house to show Katie the finished piece. It's, I mean, it's cool. 
I'd say she doesn't hate it. <laughs> That's a win for me. She really is a good sport and knows that I get super geeked out about all my Star Wars stuff. I mean, she bought me a Lego Star Destroyer for Christmas. Like, she's totally a keeper. I want to say thanks to Total Boat and Forney who sponsor my channel. Make sure you check out those links down below. Drop a comment and let me know what you think. All right, thanks for checking this one out and I'll see you back here next time.